Hi folks, I'm going to discuss about colors. It is hard to imagine a world without colors. However, have you ever wondered where do colors come from? To answer this question, we must understand how human color perception works and how matter physically interacts with light. Let's ask a simple question. Do we all see the same colors? We see grass as green and sky as blue, but do we all see colors in the same way? I have published few videos related to this topic and will have tagging it below. A small intro on colors. Light is part of electromagnetic spectrum. It's energy that travels in waves. The electromagnetic spectrum includes energy with widely different wavelengths. The spectrum ranges from radio waves to gamma waves. Radio waves have the longest wavelength. This can reach up to 100 kilometers or roughly 62 miles between waves. Gamma rays have the smallest wavelengths, about the size of the nucleus of an atom. The part of the spectrum that we can see is called visible light. This is interesting. In visible light, different colors have different wavelengths. For example, red light has the longer wavelength than blue light. In terms of physics, only difference between radio wave and visible light from a distant star is the wavelength. Our physical body respond to light, radio waves and gamma rays in different ways. Now, are the colors real? It is certain that you will see light of the same wavelength at the same color. For example, every time when you see an object reflecting a yellow light with a wavelength of 570 nanometer, you will see the same color. Therefore, the physical properties of the object and the light remain the same, no matter who looks at them. So if we define color not as something perceived, but as wavelength of light involved, we do all see same colors, but we might not all experience the same color in the same way. This is interesting. The physical construction of the cone cells and the nerves that connect them to the brain and of the brain itself is not the same in all people. The nerve transmissions are carried in the form of a chemical reaction. These are always and cannot be altered, but the photoreceptors might be slightly differently tuned. Perhaps your L cones, which is good for seeing red light, are mostly sensitive to the light with a wavelength of 564 nanometer. But mine must be more sensitive to the light with a wavelength of 567 nanometer. This will make me more sensitive to orangely red. Not only that, but the colors of one person sees in their mind, I might appear different from the colors someone else sees. It's going to be interesting. More colors and fewer colors. We all have the same way of hearing sounds, but some people can hear sounds of higher or lower frequency than others. So the ability of our ears and other sensory organs are not identical. Similarly, we know in people with color blindness, meaning they can't see some colors that others can. For example, someone might see greens as shades of brown. If they have learned to label something green, then it may take a long time for them to understand they don't see green in the same way as others. It will become obvious when others start labeling different shades of colors as green or brown. The colorblind person will see no difference. Another variant is that a few people have four types of cones instead of three. The extra type of cone is more sensitive to colors between red and green. These people are tetrachromats, and they can see colors more clearly or vibrantly than others. Some animals have four types of cones as well, and can see broader spectrums of wavelengths. 
Some insects, such as bees, can see in the ultraviolet. Similarly, some snakes, such as rattlesnakes, can see in the infrared. The physics behind what we see. We must know that white light is a mixture of all colors, including those that the human eye can't see. Everything is made up of electrons and atoms, but each substance has a different number of atoms and different electron configuration. Therefore, when light interacts with matter, one or more of the following phenomenon happens. Reflection and scattering is instead of absorbing the light energy that is reflected, most objects reflect light, but some are more reflective than others, like metals. This is directly related to the number of free electrons that can pass from atom to atom with ease. Absorption happens because the electrons absorb most of their incoming energy with little or no reflection. The object is opaque. Transmission is when the incoming light energy is much lower or much higher than that required for the electrons comprising an object to vibrate. This means the light source will pass through the object. It is like the matter will look transparent to the human eye, such as glass. Refraction is when the energy of the incoming light is the same as the vibration frequency of the electrons in the material. Light is able to go deep into the material and causes small volt vibrations in the electrons. The vibrations are then passed on from atom to atom, each vibrating at the same frequency as the incoming light source. This makes the light from the material look bent. Example, a straw in a glass of water. How our eye sees color. The human eye and brain translate light into color. Light receptors within the eye transmit messages to the brain, producing the familiar sensation of color. The retina is covered by millions of light-sensitive cells, some shaped like rods and some like cones. And these receptors that process the light and then send this information to the visual cortex. Rods are mostly concentrated around the edge of the retina and transmit mostly black and white information. Cones transmit the higher levels of light intensity that create the sensation of color and visual sharpness. These cells, working in combination with connecting nerve cells, give the brain enough information to interpret and name colors. Now let me finish this video with fun facts. Number of colors people distinguish in a rainbow depends partly on their eyes and partly on the language they speak. It's very essential. Sir Isaac Newton, who first explained that the spectrum is produced by splitting white light. He only distinguished five colors, but eventually settled with seven, which we know today, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. In short, Roy G. Bale, to describe it. Primarily, because of his attraction to an ancient Greek theory, that maintains connection between colors, the seven planets known in the 17th century, the musical scales, and the days of the week. People who live in cultures with fewer words for color will tend to distinguish fewer colors. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and please share this video. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.